Hi everyone, my name is Kim Elsenbrook and I work with the Land Conservancy of McHenry County. We're a land trust that specializes in preserving and restoring land for both public and private use. Today we're going to talk about seven shrubs that are common to McHenry County, three of which you would want to keep in your woodland, and four of which you might want to remove from your woodland if you're managing for oaks. Before we get into identification, let's go over some photos and definitions. The main difference between a tree and a shrub is the presence or absence of a bowl or a trunk of a tree. Trees generally have one stem or bowl coming up from the ground versus shrubs which have several branches coming up from the ground and do not have a bowl. If it's not out of reach, you'll want to grab a twig so you can look at some of the identifying characters on it to help you see what species you're looking at. Different things that you want to pay attention are thorns, the color, if it has hairs on it or not, and then you're going to start looking at the bud arrangement or where the leaves will grow in the spring. Another really important winter ID character are the buds. These are going to be the leaves in the spring. You want to pay attention to the size, the number, the color, the shape, and whether or not they're growing opposite one another or alternatingly up the twig. Inside of the twig, you can find the pith, which might be continuous or chambered. The continuous piths may be variant in color, and the chambered pith, you'll notice spaces within the stem. You can see the pith by breaking the twig in half or shaving off towards the center of the twig. For some plants, the presence or absence of catkins can be an identifying character when trying to determine the species of a plant. Catkins are slim, cylindrical flower clusters that are wind pollinated. These tend to develop fully in the spring. Finally, a reseam is referring to a type of structure that holds fruits in the summer, but sometimes will still be seen hanging onto the plant during the winter. Alrighty, so here we have elderberry or Sambucus canadensis. It's a shrub that commonly grows in woodlands. You'll see it a lot. One of the distinguishing characters that you can note when you're approaching this plant is its general arching pattern here of the branches. And when you get a little closer, you can look at the bark and you'll see these fairly decent sized warts on the bark. And I'll give you a close up of that in a second. The buds are arranged opposite one another up the stem. And they can, they're kind of a combination of brown and green. And if you cut the stem or you look into the pith of a twig of one of these plants, you'll see a bright white uh, fleshy, thick inside, of which I will also give you a closer look at in a moment.
Here we have nanny berry, a common shrub to moist woodlands. The, it kind of looks like a small tree when you first approach it. Uh, however, it does not grow as large as trees usually do. The buds and branches grow opposite one another up the branch. You can see that these are directly across from one another. And one of the most defining characters of this plant is the banana-shaped purplish bud on the ends of the twigs, which I think kind of look like strange shaped baby bottles, which helps me remember the fact that this is called nanny berry. So I'll give you a close up look and you can just imagine, you know, it being a strange baby bottle. Nanny berry, strange baby bottle buds on the ends that are purplish. Hey, 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 it's a hazelnut, uh, Coralis Americana, and it is an amazing shrub. You can actually get hazelnuts from it, uh, if the squirrels don't get them first in the fall. They like to grow clonally, so if you plant one, they'll sort of branch out, uh, common to dry woodlands. The buds grow alternately, alternatingly up the stem and they're often very fuzzy. They kind of get a zigzaggy appearance in general, so that's something you can kind of look for when you're coming up to the plant initially. They also tend to have very fuzzy twigs. That's another thing you can look for. And finally, you can see the catkins, which are these things, hanging off the edges that's another really good defining character of this plant and they'll get even longer in the spring. It's very fun to see. Here we have buckthorn, which is an invasive species that can pretty much be found invading any woodland anywhere. Uh, the bark, when you come up to it, has these white lenticels, which I'll show you an image of that in a moment. They also have, if you scrape away this first layer of bark on an older individual, you'll see a very orange bark underneath. The buds grow sub-opposite, so semi-opposite slash or sub-alternate to one another um, up the stem. So they can be, you can kind of see on this example that some of them look a little bit opposite, but some of them look a little alternate. So that's just a fun thing that this plant does. But a really good defining character is the bud, which also kind of is where the plant gets its name from. Buckthorn, the top of the bud, the terminal bud, the one all the way at the top, looks like a buck's foot, a deer's foot, with a thorn sticking out of the center. So if you see that, you can be sure that it's buckthorn. Here we have invasive species honeysuckle or Lanicera macchii, which is generally pretty easy to identify due to its 
light colored tan exfoliating bark. It's much lighter than most of the other shrubs you're going to see out here. So if you think that the bark looks pretty light in color and it's a shrub, it's a good bet that it's a honeysuckle. You can see the, these berries on the end, they're pretty red in color. They're a good identifying character that sometimes hang on through the winter. These buds on the shrub grow opposite one another and you can see the branches here are growing opposite one another. Another defining character of this plant is the hollow pith that you can see when you cut into the stem. I'll give you a closer look at that in a moment. Here we have gray dogwood. And although its name is the color gray, you want to look for the red twigs on the ends of the branches here. I'll show you a close up version, but you can see the ends of the twigs here. It's this new growth. They're uh, red in comparison to this main axis. So that's an initial character that you can look at when you're first coming up to the tree, or sorry, the shrub. And these buds grow opposite one another on the branch. You can kind of see the twigs here are growing opposite, the buds grow opposite. And another character that you can look for in the winter are these ray seams or the fruit that grows during the summer, you can sometimes see a leftover version of that on the little twiggy things, which I'll give you a little bit of a close up here in a second. Common in wet areas, gray dogwood. Here we have winged burning bush. This is a common landscaping favorite. It is the big red fiery leafy bush that you see grow, uh, growing in most lawns or yards uh, and it turns that color in the fall. It's a very beautiful color but it is a very problematic invasive species of our native woodlands. It grows with twigs or buds opposite one another up the branch and you can see uh, the green twig has layers of brown flaky sort of growths on it which is where it gets its winged name winged burning bush and it can pretty much be found growing uh, most most woodlands you, you might find it and this example has some of the little fruit flowers that remained from last year so sometimes those remain over the winter All of the plants discussed in today's video can be found at Riders Woods Park in Woodstock. So go take a hike and see if you can spot the plants learned in today's video. Happy hiking!